Estrella sat by the mirror in her bedroom, applying makeup, getting ready for a family dinner celebrating her father's anniversary. Her red lipstick was nearly out, she needed to buy a new one, but there was very little money left for expenses. Estrella hated cheap cosmetics and clothes, but she didn't see any other option for now. She was finishing her studies at the acting academy, which she entered quite late, at the age of 26. Estrella earned money by taking home orders for custom-made clothing, a profession she acquired after school, which remained her only source of income at the moment. Of course, Estrella sometimes took part in one-time projects like advertising shoots or music videos, which brought good income and satisfaction, but unfortunately, such events occurred rarely, the competition was too high. However, the girl didn't give up and continued to attend various castings and auditions regularly, as well as tried to attend various social events where she could make useful connections. All this took time and hit her wallet pretty hard. Estrella sighed and looked at herself in the mirror again. She looked beautiful, long hair cascaded gracefully below her shoulders, big blue eyes framed by long lashes, smooth skin with a slight tan seemed to glow from within. Estrella smiled at herself and went to get dressed. The dress she chose for the celebration was almost new. She had only worn it once for the presentation of a new film by the young but talented director Alejandro Salazar. Estrella sewed it herself from dark blue taffeta and decorated it with artificial black pearls. Dressed in the gown, the girl critically examined herself in the mirror. The outfit fit her perfectly, and Estrella once again marveled at her talent for a moment. Since childhood, she had been able to create wonderful things with her own hands. Of course, over the years, her skill had greatly improved, especially after completing sewing courses, but the ability to combine fabrics and decorations, as well as to choose the right style and cut, seemed to be innate in her. As far as she could remember, Estrella had been crazy about fabrics and rejoiced at any beautiful swatch that came into her hands. She had a whole stack of albums where she drew princesses in stunning outfits. Many said she could become a talented fashion designer, but Estrella knew that it required significant investment. And in their family, all the funds went to Carmelita, Estrella's twin sister. In childhood, the sisters were very close. They loved reading books with bright pictures, feeding squirrels in the park, hiding sweets and coins in the hollows of trees that they could reach. The twins always found a thousand interesting things to do, and they didn't need anyone else. In the evenings, they hid under the covers and told each other scary stories, and then, terrified, they would calm each other down. Estrella felt that she had no one closer than her sister. But then everything changed. Their interests diverged, Estrella fell in love with drawing and other creative activities, while Carmelita became actively involved in sports, running, swimming, and playing basketball. Their father, a track and field coach, supported his daughter's endeavors. When Carmelita became passionate about tennis, he bought her everything she needed, including several sets of beautiful uniforms. On that very evening, Estrella decided to approach her parents to ask them to buy her a piece of silk fabric she wanted to sew one of the dresses she had drawn in her album to participate in the school craft competition. But her father just shook his head. It's too expensive, and I've already spent a lot of money on Carmelita's tennis gear. But I really want to participate in this competition, exclaimed Estrella. You should have mentioned it earlier, replied her father. They only announced it this morning, retorted Estrella. Well, it's just some competition, no big deal. There will be others, her father waved it off, taking a newspaper from the table and scanning the headlines. But it's important to me, whispered disappointed Estrella. And what if you ruin the fabric, intervened her mother, who was watering the plants in the room during their conversation. I'll be very careful, promised Estrella. And then where will you put your dress, scoffed her mother, wiping the leaves of a large ficus. You won't wear it to school. It will just gather dust in the closet. Her father nodded in agreement, loudly flipping the page of the newspaper. But you bought Carmelita. Estrella almost cried out. Your sister is pursuing something serious. Her father cut her off, still engrossed in the newspaper. She'll become a sportsmaster and will earn a lot of money, help us in our old age. Your dresses are just a waste of money. 
Estrella realized it was pointless to argue and prove anything to her parents. She rushed out of the living room and locked herself in her and Carmelita's room, which was empty at that moment her sister had gone for practice. Collapsing onto the bed, the girl cried from hurt. Then she took out her drawings from the desk drawer and tore them up. Since then, Estrella stopped drawing dresses and outfits, although they still haunted her in her dreams. When it was time to decide where to study after school, Estrella couldn't think of anything better and chose a course in tailoring and sewing, which she completed with distinction. After that, she got a job in a tailor shop and started doing custom clothing. Meanwhile, Carmelita traveled to tennis tournaments and won medal after medal. Newspapers wrote about her. She appeared on television. Carmelita became a real celebrity. A promising young sports star and a beauty that was hard to miss. She was invited to television shows, featured in advertisements for sports clothing, equipment, and useful supplements. That's how she met Gustavo Suarez, a popular showman, handsome, wealthy, and free. Their pair was envied by everyone, and Estrella was no exception. Why does she always get the best of everything? She asked with frustration, sitting in front of the mirror. I'm not any worse. Maybe I'm even more talented. It was then that the girl decided on a change, submitting her documents to the acting academy. She, too, wanted to be noticed and recognized. Of course, the clients at the atelier constantly praised and recommended her services to their friends. Estrella never had problems with work. On the contrary, she was simply overwhelmed with orders. Everyone loved what she did. But for Estrella, it was not enough. Her sister's example made her desire more. Partly thanks to her striking appearance and personally tailored extravagant outfit in which she came to the first meeting with the teachers, Estrella was accepted into the acting academy, and the girl immersed herself in a completely different world, full of ambitions and hopes. All of Estrella's classmates were significantly younger, but she didn't dwell much on her age and easily befriended them, especially with a girl named Mia. They became practically inseparable, and Estrella dared to make even bigger changes. Together with Mia, they rented a small but comfortable studio not far from the center of their academy. The girl got half of the wardrobe, a narrow bed, and a wide table at her disposal, which she divided into two unequal halves. She steadied rolls at the smaller one, while the larger one was occupied by an old sewing machine and overlock. Sewing accessories filled the shelf intended for textbooks, and Estrella stacked books under the table. An ancient mannequin named Josephine occupied the corner, which the girl called her own. The studio was bright, the girls kept it tidy and cozy. However, the neighbors were almost never home. Mia couldn't sit still for long, which corresponded to her young age. She constantly invited Estrella to hang out, but the girl needed to work to pay for the academy and accommodation. Therefore, most of the time Estrella was left to herself and engaged in sewing. Although work always pleased her, the girl often felt very lonely. She missed someone close and dear nearby. Becoming friends with Mia, Estrella experienced a feeling similar to sisterly attachment for the first time, which she felt in childhood. Yet no one could replace that sincere closeness she had with Carmelita. Despite the quarrels, she missed her sister very much. And then the day came when their father turned 50. Estrella and Carmelita were invited to a celebratory dinner at their parents' house. Estrella hadn't seen her sister in a long time. They were both too busy, and their lives had become too different, so the girl was very nervous. She knew Carmelita would come with her famous fiancé, which also added to her anxiety. Trying to understand her feelings, Estrella realized that she envied her sister not so much, though she couldn't deny that feeling, as she was jealous. Yes, she had desperately envied Carmelita all her life, first for tennis, and now for the fiancé who had completely captured her sister's attention. Estrella was very afraid that Carmelita wouldn't speak to her a couple of words all evening. Finally, the girl was fully ready to go out. She grabbed her purse, called a taxi, and stepped out onto the street. The evening was warm, pleasantly scented with some flowers. Estrella wasn't particularly knowledgeable about them. A taxi pulled up, and the girl got into the car. On the way to her parents' house, she nervously fiddled with the strap of her small handbag and the ribbon on her father's gift. 
Eventually, she arrived at the doorstep of her parents' house and rang the bell with trembling hands. Her father answered the door. He affectionately hugged Estrella and thanked her for the gift she gave him. Estrella entered the living room, where a large round table was set and several guests had already gathered. Carmelita and her fiancé had not yet arrived. Their old grandmother entered the living room, who had come from the province, and Estrella rushed to hug her. Abuela, darling, how I missed you, she whispered. My dear, why are you alone? Where is your sister? The grandmother asked, surprised. The second sister is already here, a cheerful voice came from behind them. Estrella turned around. Carmelita and her handsome fiancé Gustavo stood at the door. He hugged the bride around the waist and was charming and irresistibly good-looking in his light suit and sky-blue shirt. Carmelita wore a striking red dress with bare shoulders. Surely from a famous designer, thought Estrella, not understanding herself whom she envied, her sister because of her expensive dress, or the designer who, unlike the girl, fulfilled his dream. Carmelita's neck sparkled with a necklace of diamonds and rubies. The couple was so dazzling that the guests greeted them with applause. Estrella bit her lip, staring at the floor, when suddenly she felt her sister's warm embrace. She awkwardly hugged Carmelita back in response. Hi, little sister, exclaimed Carmelita, stepping back a bit to look Estrella in the eyes. You can't imagine how much I've missed you. Oh, these crazy schedules. And Gustavo suddenly felt like going on a week-long vacation to the islands. As she spoke the last words, she looked at her fiancé with adoration and love. And how about you? Carmelita turned to her sister again. Tears welled up in Estrella's eyes. Her life seemed too dull and boring compared to the fairy tale her sister found herself in, but she held herself together and replied as calmly as possible, Wonderful. I just came back from a shoot. She unexpectedly lied to herself. Her sister looked her in the eyes and squinted slightly. She always did that when she was genuinely interested in something. A major project, she inquired. Quite. But everything is still under wraps, Estrella clouded the issue. Will it be shown on the big screen? Carmelita continued to inquire. They're not saying yet. But is the director at least well known? Carmelita's eyes sparkled. Yes, he's young, but already winning the love and popularity of the audience. Could it be Alejandro Salazar? gasped the sister. Estrella nodded, burning with shame deep down for lying again. But she couldn't help it. She wanted to make some impression on her sister. As it turned out, she didn't need to lie at all. Listen, your outfit. Carmelita exclaimed in admiration. Did you sew this magical dress yourself? Her sister was now examining Estrella from all angles. Of course, myself, Estrella wanted to snap angrily. I don't have a wealthy fiancé or cool athletic achievements like you. But she held back once more. Yes, I came up with it myself, and when I had a free evening, I sewed it, she replied, and this time it was pure truth. Amazing, Estrella. You have a natural talent. I haven't seen you in movies yet, but you would make an excellent designer. You missed out on not pursuing it. Carmelita continued to sincerely admire her, as if she didn't know that all the money was spent on her by their parents. Estrella was ready to explode with anger welling up inside her. Listen, little sister, Carmelita suddenly whispered in her ear. Let's go to our room before dinner starts. And she briskly led the bewildered Estrella along. Their room was on the second floor at the end of the corridor, the coziest place in the house. There, they could hide from the rest of the world and devise games and entire universes together. Nothing had changed in the room. Their parents had left everything in its place. When Estrella entered with Carmelita, all traces of her former anger were gone. Memories of happy childhood days flooded over her as she reverently examined the shelves with their old toys and books. It seemed Carmelita felt the same. If only we could go back to childhood for just one day, she said. Before tennis. Remember how much fun we had. We didn't need anyone else. It was like we were alone in the world. I miss that sometimes, Estrella admitted. 
Me too, Carmelita nodded. They both glanced at an old photo in a pink frame with hearts. They were eight years old, each with two funny ponytails, standing arm in arm and smiling at the camera. Remember that morning? Carmelita asked nostalgically. We were looking for snails in the yard after the night storm. I'll never forget how scared I was of storms, and you too, even though you always pretended to be brave. Estrella nodded. Yeah, I had just found one of the fattest snails, and you made a face of disgust, and then Dad showed up with a camera, saying you wanted to take our picture, she recalled. Yeah, yeah, and you were holding the snail behind your back because, according to you, those creatures hate being photographed. Carmelita added with laughter. Estrella laughed too, silently noting to herself that she hadn't felt this lighthearted in a long time. Carmelita suddenly gave her a sharp look, and from the mischievous sparkles in her eyes, Estrella understood that her sister was up to something. It looks like I recognize that look, the girl whispered. Carmelita smirked knowingly. What are you up to? Estrella asked, amused. Remember how we used to swap clothes in childhood to fool the adults? Carmelita said. Estrella nodded. Of course, she replied. And no one could tell us apart. Let's do that trick again now. Carmelita suggested. I really want to try on your gorgeous dress. Estrella was surprised but pleased. Of course, she would gladly try on her sister's designer dress and her diamond necklace as well. But common sense told her that it was a bit strange for their age. Are you sure? Estrella asked doubtfully. We're not kids anymore. But Carmelita had already unfastened the necklace clasp. Oh, come on, Estrella, don't be such a killjoy. Let's have some fun at this stuffy formal dinner, she teased her sister. And let's see if anyone here can expose us. In childhood, only mom could barely do that. Reluctantly, Estrella agreed. Some inner sense told her it wasn't wise to get involved in one of her sister's schemes. However, Carmelita was unstoppable. They changed clothes and stood before the mirror, admiring themselves. Wait, you need red lipstick, Carmelita said, examining her sister closely. Let's see if there's anything in the drawer. She found her old crimson lipstick and applied it to Estrella's lips. There, much better, she said happily. So, newly minted Carmelita, shall we head to the table? She jokingly offered her elbow to Estrella, who took it. The game was starting to appeal to her too. Just make sure you don't kiss Gustavo. If anything, say you have a headache. Carmelita instructed, laughing. Estrella nodded. I hope this doesn't end in disaster, a worried thought flashed through her mind, but she pushed it aside. If she was going to play, she might as well play along. After all, she was training to be an actress. Let's see how good of an actress you are, teased Carmelita's sister, as if reading her thoughts. She opened the door, and they began to descend the stairs. The guests eagerly awaited their arrival. At last, our little stars have deigned to descend, proclaimed the father in a slightly mocking but good-natured tone. Now we can start dinner. The guests, chatting animatedly, began to serve themselves and sample the dishes prepared by their mother. Estrella sat next to Gustavo, who kept asking her what she wanted and refilling her wine glass. But Estrella couldn't swallow a bite, she was too nervous. Carmelita, on the other hand, felt right at home. She chatted with the guests, laughed loudly, and occasionally winked at Gustavo, who sat across from her. I think your sister is flirting with me, Gustavo whispered to Estrella. Sorry, but I somehow like it. With an effort, Estrella forced a smile. I see everything, darling, she whispered back, and he affectionately squeezed her hand. I'm only faithful to you, Gustavo murmured. Estrella was terribly afraid that one of the guests would approach her and ask about Carmelita's tournaments or her plans for the future. And it happened. Carmelita, where are you going next year? Uncle Pablo, father's brother, asked her. All eyes turned to the girl. Carmelita looked at her sister, mischief twinkling in her eyes. She was clearly enjoying their little game. Estrella turned pale, sweat breaking out on her forehead. 
She didn't know what to say. Carmelita, don't tell us you don't remember your schedule or that your manager decides everything for you. Her sister teased playfully, then proudly added, I already know what movies I'll be starring in for the next year. I have nothing but leading roles. After making this statement, Carmelita rolled her eyes dramatically. A wave of anger rose in Australia. How dare she behave like this? Lying through her teeth, making me look like a fool, she thought. Well, she would get back at her for this. I think I'll take maternity leave, Estrella blurted out the first thing that came to mind and immediately felt Gustavo's face tense up. Carmelita, too, lost her ability to speak, her eyes now shooting daggers. Victoriously glancing at her sister, Estrella apologized for briefly leaving the living room. As she exited the table, Gustavo didn't even flinch, he was so shocked by her words. However, when Estrella stepped out onto the terrace, Carmelita's fiancé followed her. Seeing him, Estrella became flustered. Darling, I want to talk to you, he said seriously. Estrella nodded nervously. What you said at the table, is it true? Are you pregnant? Oh, no, Gustavo, protested Estrella. It was just a joke. Everyone was pressing, and I said what I said. Perhaps the joke didn't land well. Gustavo tousled his short hair. Oh, thank God. What a relief. Then he anxiously looked into the girl's eyes. Carmelita, please don't think that I don't want children or don't plan on a future with you, no. Believe me, it's not like that. With these words, he took Estrella's hands in his palms. The girl felt awkward, standing there, holding her breath. I love you very much. And I want children, but... Not right now, a little later. You see. He paused for a moment. I'm sorry I didn't say it sooner. I wanted to surprise you, but since it's out now... Gustavo finally murmured. The thing is, I've been offered to move abroad and lead one of the most popular shows on local television. You can't even imagine its budget. Besides, they'll provide me with a villa by the ocean, give me a prestigious car, you understand. Are you happy, Carmelita? Estrella nodded. So, Gustavo is leaving? Of course, she whispered in response. I'm very happy for you. Gustavo smiled at her with a charming smile and leaned in very close to the girl's ear. Perhaps you didn't understand. I want you to move there with me, Gustavo whispered. Several conflicting emotions immediately pierced Estrella. Firstly, intense envy. This handsome and wealthy man loves her sister so much and offers to move to the ocean with her, while Estrella has no one, not even a cat, to alleviate her loneliness. Life is so unfair. Secondly, Estrella felt jealous of her sister. Yes, jealousy awakened in her with renewed force, Gustavo wants to take Carmelita with him, and she, perhaps, won't see her for the next year, or maybe even longer. Thirdly, a wave of despair engulfed the girl that her sister would drift even further away from her. Pull yourself together, Estrella, the girl tried to calm herself, but it didn't help much. Gustavo was too close, it troubled her, but at the same time, Estrella felt her own strength. The fate of her sister and her fiancé was now in her hands. Oh no, I'm going to ruin everything now, screamed one voice in the girl's head. She deserves it, echoed another. Estrella felt sick, her head was spinning, her stomach twisted, and she felt like she was about to lose consciousness. And suddenly, she really wanted to kiss the man who was standing so close to her. This feeling came suddenly, and in her state, Estrella couldn't understand its reason, whether it was because Gustavo was irresistible, because of the enchanting scent of his perfume, or simply because she hadn't had anyone for so long. Why are you silent? The bewildered fiancé of Carmelita asked, and Estrella, unable to resist everything that was happening inside her, blurted out sharply, I'm not going anywhere with you. I won't abandon my family. If you want, go, but without me. And, breaking free from his embrace, Estrella ran into the house, then up the stairs to their childhood room. There she closed the door behind her and ripped off the diamond necklace from her neck. 
Tossing it onto the vanity, the girl kicked off her high-heeled shoes and began to remove the crimson dress. Someone knocked on the door, softly at first, then harder. Estrella, open up, it's me, she heard her sister's anxious voice. In her anger, clad only in her underwear, she stormed towards the door and flung it open. Carmelita quickly entered the room and closed the door behind her. What's gotten into you? She pounced on Estrella. Give back the dress, Estrella replied grumpily. First explain to me what's going on. Why did you tell everyone I'm planning to have a baby? You're to blame for everything yourself. You shouldn't have started all this. Estrella exclaimed in desperation. You provoke me. Why did you say I would be starring in major roles? Carmelita looked at her sister with incomprehension. It was just a joke. I didn't think you'd take it so seriously. Relax, Estrella. Life loves lightness. Estrella shot a thunderous glare at her sister. It's easy for you to say. Our parents always fulfilled all your desires. They bought everything you asked for. But I never got anything. Nobody ever encouraged my hobbies. Carmelita frowned. It's not my fault I chose sports and succeeded in it. I worked hard and earned everything I have. You know how many hours I trained every week. How much effort and energy I put into sports. If you wanted to, you could have succeeded in your own field too. But you didn't even try. Estrella turned away to the window. Nobody supported me. Father refused to buy fabrics. Carmelita approached closer. You could have tried to save money when you got a job. But you didn't do that. You just gave up. Estrella's shoulders suddenly shook and she burst into tears. Maybe you're right, Carmelita, she said through tears. You just betrayed yourself, Estrella, Carmelita said firmly. The sister turned to her. Tears streamed down her cheeks. Yes, maybe. But I was never as strong as you. Carmelita said nothing. She silently went to the wardrobe and took off Estrella's dress. In complete silence, the girls got dressed and Estrella was the first to leave the room. Downstairs, she ran into their mother. Girls, where have you been? We were worried about you, she pounced on her daughter. Mom, I'm leaving, I have a headache, Estrella said. But I can give you a pill, her mother hastily responded. Estrella was about to politely decline when Carmelita's anxious voice came from behind. And where's Gustavo? Has anyone seen him? Their mother shook her head. No, I thought he was with you. You were talking about something on the terrace. Carmelita cast a quick glance at Estrella. Mom, forgive us, we'll be back in a minute, said Carmelita, grabbing her sister's hand and pulling her into the corridor. What were you talking about? She asked directly. Estrella just shrugged. She felt a terrible fatigue. Her head really started to ache. All she wanted was to be home as soon as possible. Where did he go? Carmelita persisted. She seemed on the verge of hysteria. I really don't know. Estrella lied once again for the evening. I need to go. She hastily grabbed her purse from the hangar and rushed out the door. After walking a couple of blocks, Estrella stopped and caught her breath. No, she wouldn't think about anything. The only thing she would do is call a taxi, go home, and go to sleep. The next day, Mom called. Estrellita, dear, Carmelita told me everything. She's with you? Yes, dear. She's crying. Says Gustavo isn't answering calls. He didn't tell you anything, did he? No, Mom, Estrella lied again. Carmelita thinks he left her because of your stupid joke about the baby. Probably so. He doesn't seem to want children, Estrella replied coldly. Well, Mom, I have to go to class. After hanging up, the girl stared blankly ahead for a while. I'm so awful, Estrella said aloud and smiled. For the first time in her life, she felt like she mattered, like something depended on her. Estrella felt strong, and she liked it. 
She sat in front of the mirror and delicately drew elegant lines on her upper eyelids with a black pencil. Then she painted her lips with bright lipstick. Satisfied with her reflection, Estrella stood up and approached the wardrobe. Choosing her favorite dress in the color of sea waves, she unexpectedly complimented it with a cherry vest and put on a golden hat with a black feather on her head. Then she took long golden earrings from the shelf and inserted them into her ears. She looked very unusual now, her outfit was clearly not for lectures, but Estrella just shrugged and tilted her chin up. Then she took a small velvet purse and left the room. When she arrived at the academy, young boys and girls were already crowding at the entrance to the auditorium. Estrella approached closer. Is he really going to lecture us himself? She heard an admiring whisper. Yes, the rector invited him, imagine. How lucky. And I was about to skip class. Well, I almost overslept. Who are you talking about, girls? Estrella interjected. Her classmates turned to her and, ignoring her extravagant attire, began eagerly talking over each other. Each of the girls wanted to be the first to voice the grand news. Amidst their jumbled remarks, Estrella finally understood that their lecture would be delivered by none other than Alejandro Salazar himself. She recalled her life from yesterday and bitterly smirked. Does it not matter to you? The girls exclaimed, surprised. Estrella didn't reply. The sense of power that had inspired her that morning now weighed heavily upon her for some reason. Suddenly, she felt a pang of remorse as she recalled her numerous lies. How could I? She thought again and again. Nevertheless, Carmelita was like a sister to her. Essentially, she hadn't done anything wrong. She was simply following her passion and pursuing her dreams. Who wouldn't have done the same in her place? Estrella was so deeply immersed in her own thoughts that she didn't notice Alejandro Salazar entering the lecture hall, followed by enthusiastic students. Coming to her senses, Estrella pulled the door towards her and entered behind him. Alejandro was already standing behind the lectern. He wore an elegant dark suit with a lilac shirt, its top button casually undone. He glanced at her over his glasses, which suited him well, but said nothing. Estrella quickly scanned the audience and, spotting a vacant spot, slipped into it. All eyes were on her, some with excitement, others with surprise, and some with judgment. Estrella didn't care, too much turmoil had built up inside her. How tired she was of this absurd situation. She felt an intense desire to drop everything and just leave. Where to? She didn't even know herself. But Estrella desperately wanted to escape to a place where nobody knew her. However, she realized that by doing so, she would betray herself again, succumbing once more to her weakness. Carmelita was right. Of course, it was always easy and convenient to play the victim. Yet, Estrella still harbored resentment towards her parents, who, being the closest people to her, hadn't supported her. That's enough of your nonsense, Estrella, the girl muttered quietly, completely forgetting where she was. Of course, she didn't listen to the lecture of the renowned director. She was very surprised to see him right in front of her. It seems you want to share your thoughts, senorita, he asked. Blushing like a lobster, Estrella stood up from her seat and, stumbling, said, I'm sorry, senor Salazar, I got a little distracted, Estrella said quietly. I see, he nodded, looking at her attentively. It seems you're not quite here with us right now. Perhaps you're not feeling well? Oh no, senor, I'm sorry, I just have some family issues, but I'll try to focus and listen to you more attentively. Please do, Salazar nodded again and, giving Estrella a long thoughtful look, walked back to the lectern. Why was he looking at you like that? Someone whispered from the back row. Estrella just shrugged. She didn't want to attract any more attention to herself. When the lecture ended, Estrella headed towards the exit, but Alejandro, around whom girls were already flocking, wanting to take selfies or get an autograph, apologized and caught up with her. Excuse me, how should I address you, senorita, he asked. Estrella, the girl replied. A magical name, the director reacted with a smile. So, you're a little star. Estrella felt a surge of anger again, 
but looking into Alejandro's sincere eyes, she realized he wasn't mocking her at all. They stood in the hallway, students passing by, glancing at them with surprise, and Salazar, gently taking Estrella's hand, led her aside. I just wanted to ask one thing, he whispered. Your outfit, did you design it yourself? Estrella involuntarily glanced at herself. Engrossed in her thoughts, she completely forgot what she had worn to the lecture. Now she felt a bit ashamed that she had boldly dressed up for the academy. Yes, she modestly nodded. I designed and sewed it. So, you're a designer? Alejandro clarified. Oh, no. Estrella waved it off. I'm just a seamstress. Alejandro stared into the girl's eyes intently. But I see there's something more behind it. I really like your outfit. Thank you, Estrella simply replied. The thing is, I'm currently looking for a costume designer for my new personal project. It's going to be a philosophical film about life and, of course, love. He said the last word dreamily, but with a hint of sadness in his voice. Then Alejandro took out a business card from his pocket and handed it to the girl. I'd like to discuss this with you over a business dinner. If, of course, you'd be interested in trying yourself in such a role. Estrella couldn't believe what she was hearing. Alejandro was offering her the opportunity to participate in his film as a costume designer. It was something incredible and absolutely wonderful. Trembling, Estrella took the business card with her hand. Your offer really appeals to me. I would be happy to discuss it with you, she replied excitedly. Alejandro smiled broadly. When would you be able to spare some time? Today, tomorrow? Estrella wanted to shout that she was ready right now, as she had dreamed of something like this her whole life, but she restrained herself. Tomorrow evening. All right, then I'll call you during the day, and we'll discuss the details of the meeting. Estrella nodded. Alejandro lightly squeezed her hand in farewell and returned to the students waiting for him at the department. Estrella smiled and walked to the exit, tightly holding the business card in her hand as if it were a happy lottery ticket. Returning home, she stared at herself in the mirror for a long time, recalling the events of the past few days. Life was a strange thing. For so long, she had dreamed of something bigger, and now, when a renowned director made her a business offer, she felt only tiredness. Yes, she was glad he singled her out among others, noticing her talent for creating clothes, and it certainly flattered her. But nothing more. Estrella thought of her sister. Did she feel something similar? Did all her achievements leave only a slight taste of victory, but overall, nothing changed? Carmelita had always been the same girl with whom they were so close in childhood. Realizing this, Estrella felt guilty, and tears of remorse flowed from her eyes. How did it happen that she caused her sister so much trouble by quarreling her with her fiancé? How could she be such a liar and selfish? She needed to urgently rectify the situation. Estrella wiped her tears and dialed her sister's number. She answered immediately, as if she hadn't let go of the phone all this time. Was waiting for Gustavo's call, Estrella thought. Oh, Estrella, it's you, Carmelita responded quietly upon hearing her greeting. Her voice sounded lost and muted. Can I come over now? Estrella asked. Come, her sister replied indifferently. Thirty minutes later, Estrella stood at Carmelita's doorstep. A luxurious mansion of a delicate blue color sat on one of the wealthiest streets in the city. Estrella rang the bell, and Carmelita herself opened the door. She led Estrella into the living room, sat her on the couch, and sat down beside her. Carmelita didn't look well, her eyes swollen from crying, dark circles underneath. I've hardly slept, Carmelita confessed. Have you eaten anything at least? Estrella asked with concern. Carmelita just shook her head. I can't, she said. You must eat, Estrella insisted. Carmelita looked at her suspiciously. Why are you so worried about me? Last time we met, it seemed like you couldn't care less about me. Estrella lowered her head. I'm sorry, Carmelita. It's all my fault. 
She expected her sister to lash out at her with reproaches and accusations, but instead, Carmelita burst into tears. It's not your fault, Estrella, she struggled to say. Everything happens for the best. What do you mean? The girl asked, surprised. He left when he thought I wanted a child, Carmelita said through tears. Let him go to everyone. Why do I need a man who doesn't want children with me? And Carmelita cried aloud. Estrella wanted to hug and comfort her, but she couldn't move. She was in some kind of stupor. It's all because of me, the same thought flashed through her mind. She had to confess. Right now. Gathering her courage, Estrella spoke. Carmelita, listen. It's not about that. Then what is it about? Carmelita exclaimed angrily, still not looking at Estrella. She will hate me as soon as she hears the truth, the girl thought fleetingly. And she'll kick me out of her house. No, not just out of the house. Out of her life. Such things aren't forgiven. Suddenly, Estrella remembered their childhood closeness with a pang of longing, something that remained forever in the past. There was no point in beating around the bush, she herself had cooked up this mess. Carmelita, he didn't leave because of the baby, Estrella said firmly, closing her eyes and blurting out, he left because I, or rather you, as he thought, refused to move abroad with him. Carmelita looked at Estrella with a look full of despair. What? They offered him to host some foreign show, very popular. He told me that on the terrace. And you refused? But, Carmelita was so shocked she couldn't find the right words. I'm sorry. I was very angry with you, Estrella admitted. And I. I was also jealous and envious. And, I was very afraid of losing you forever. Oh God. Carmelita whispered. Estrella straightened her back. You have every right to hate me, she whispered. There was a very quiet moment for a few seconds. Then Carmelita leaned closer and hugged her sister. Estrella, she whispered. And you forgive me. I was such a selfish person. I always only thought about myself. I knew how much you needed parental support, but I took it all upon myself. Actually, I envied you a little too. I remember, I dreamed of drawing as beautifully as you, but I couldn't do anything right. And then I started actively doing sports just to be better than you at something. Estrella couldn't believe her ears. Are you serious, Carmelita? You envied me? Of course, nodded the sister. Because you have natural talent. And I was always just ordinary. They sat hugging for a long time, each lost in her own thoughts. Then Estrella looked at her sister and whispered, I love you very much, Carmelita. Carmelita nodded gratefully. And I love you, my little star. Upon hearing this, Estrella burst into tears. Carmelita used to call her little star only in childhood. The next day, Alejandro invited Estrella to a cozy restaurant in the city center. It was located near her studio, so she didn't have to take a taxi. She wore the same dark blue dress with pearls that she wore at the family celebration, styled her hair beautifully, and applied bright lipstick. As she was leaving the house, she received a message from Carmelita. We've made up with Gustavo. Everything's fine. Good luck with Salazar. Estrella smiled. She told Carmelita the whole truth about Alejandro. No, she wasn't starring in his movie, but by some fortunate coincidence, perhaps she would still collaborate with him. Carmelita was very happy for her sister. The young director was waiting for Estrella at the table. When she sat down, he offered her to order something, but the girl refused, explaining that she wasn't hungry. Alejandro asked the waiter to bring some light snacks and lemonade, and then turned to Estrella. You look lovely, he said. Blushing, the girl thanked Salazar for the compliment. He began to talk about the film, and Estrella noticed the passion in his eyes. She liked this person, and his idea resonated with her. Alejandro started describing the costumes he had envisioned, and now Estrella's eyes sparkled. She supplemented his images with details, and their lively conversation inspired both of them. 
The waiter brought food and drinks, momentarily bringing them back to reality. Alejandro leaned back in his chair and looked attentively at Estrella. When the waiter walked away, Salazar said, You delicately perceive my thoughts and elegantly complete them. It's magical. Estrella nodded shyly. Are you ready to sign the contract? Alejandro asked, leaning forward. His gaze was attentive and trusting. Ready, Estrella replied without hesitation. Her eyes were shining with happiness, and Alejandro, lightly touching her hand, whispered, You truly are a little star. How lucky I am to have found you. Dear viewers, If you enjoyed the story, please support the video by liking it and leaving a comment. Thank you very much.